Right then, turning uh, from the uh, access control tools to more of the access control threats. Um, some specific examples of, of threats uh, that we are dealing with in access control and, and that we will have to use specific tools to, to address. Uh, so the different uh, uh, types of attacks that can be mounted uh, against our access control, let's start out with brute force. Um, this uh, pretty much always works if you've got enough time. And it's just, uh, you know, brute force is, is uh, primarily going to be an attack against um, passwords. Uh, but, uh, you know, any kind of, of information pattern that is going to be used to uh, authenticate, um, we can try a, a brute force attack to... Uh, try and match that pattern so that uh, uh, people can get access to our systems. Um, but of course, you know, primarily we're thinking of, of uh, guessing passwords uh, just by brute force or uh, sometimes guessing um, as, um, encryption keys by uh, brute force. Um, and, of course, uh, the data encryption standard has uh, fallen, uh, well, it's been many years now, it's been decades now, then, uh, uh, since the uh, successful attacks and, and basically brute force um, worked in, in different ways. Uh, so, uh, another way of dealing with uh, passwords, uh, trying to guess passwords to get access to accounts, um, are dictionary attacks and you know do people use uh, words from the dictionary and unfortunately very often they do uh, when I first got into the the IT field uh, many many years ago 75% uh, of systems could be accessed um, because somebody in one of the accounts on the system would have the password love, sex, or secret uh, as, as their password. Um, and so, you know, words out of the dictionary, uh, that is why uh, we keep on trying to stress to people ways to uh, create more uh, difficult to guess uh, passwords, passwords that are not uh, available out of the dictionary. Um, I am currently crossing Dry Creek, and I uh, think that uh, I should learn the First Nations name for Dry Creek. Uh, number one, it would be uh, polite to do so, uh, but also it is uh, uh, from the one uh, glance I had at it, and, and I cannot remember the exact uh, word, uh, but it, it seems to have um, a capital letter, which is not the beginning of the word, um, a uh, digit, um, uh, probably at least three punctuation marks, and as far as I can tell, a Simpsons character. So this is, you know, th this is going to be a very, very good password, uh, because um, it's not going to be found in any dictionary. Well, no, that's not quite true. If somebody decides to try uh, First Nations dictionary of uh, terms and place names, they will probably be found there, so I should maybe rethink that. Um, anyways, the, the uh, point being, of course, with, with these uh, uh, attacks against passwords is that we are trying to do spoofing. We are trying to pretend that we are uh, somebody else. We're trying to masquerade as a legitimate user. Uh, and so, uh, you know, that is uh, an attack. Uh, spoofing, masquerading. Um, denial of service as well. Uh, another attack to uh, attack the, the availability uh, in terms of access control. Um, 
we've got uh, additional threats here. Uh, now, sometimes the the threats are not specific attacks. Um, there can be accidental or incremental or, or um, sometimes intentional uh, disclosure of the information. And we need to uh, take steps, uh, put tools in place to uh, try and uh, address those possibilities. Um, we also uh, are going to look at uh, social engineering, of course. I uh, keep on mentioning social engineering. I keep on mentioning social engineering because it works. Uh, you know, attacking uh, the people in a variety of ways so that, uh, you know, you are not attacking the technology, you are attacking the people. Uh, and people, once again, uh, are your greatest weakness and at the same time your greatest strength. So we may be, you know, dealing with um, issues of training, issues of policy, issues of, uh, you know, how to um, ensure that people understand uh, the dangers and why we are asking for different access controls. Uh, and then there's covert channels. Now, uh, they come in uh, a couple of different types. Um, there are the covert timing channels and and these are ways that um, we can use um, sometimes processes within the uh, the system or uh, indications uh, that uh, can signal to a party outside uh, some information from within the system that is uh, that they're prevented from uh, dealing with directly or, or uh, uh, transmitting directly, uh, but having timing channels, uh, generally a, a low bandwidth, but, uh, you know, low bandwidth can uh, provide some uh, fairly important information depending on, on what other information you have. And, of course, uh, storage channels. Now, storage channels are going to be where the information is stored and then um, reused very often. And we're going to talk in the next uh, clip more specifically about uh, object reuse. But uh, just the fact that the information is stored and then uh, we are going to use it for another purpose or it is going to be used for another purpose. Um, it is uh, going to be made available to um, uh, some other purpose, some other process, some other system, and the information can be obtained from that storage channel because the information is stored there. So uh, covert channels uh, can happen in a variety of ways. And as I said, uh, we're going to look more specifically at uh, the object reuse part of that uh, in the next clip.